Okay, so picking up where I left off last week, um, I just got done adding this rubber um, gasket that goes up against the windshield to this panel. What I did was I drilled out with a number 30 bit, which is a clearance for an eighth inch uh, rivet. Uh, these are countersunk steel rivets, and on the back side I have aluminum backup washers to hold the plastic uh, to the back side tightly. Um, and then I'll be sanding these rivets down and then covering them over with epoxy. And the whole thing is going to get a um, coating of uh, rocker um, paint, so it'll have a, a textured finish on top of this piece in the eventual end but right now I'm going to um, just uh, do a few things to uh, tune it up sit it back in the car and tune it up and that's where I am right now all right so I got the uh, the rubber uh, bead on the um, attached to the cow top over here I had to do some adjusting had it in and out of there a couple of times I drill out the rivets straighten it out Anyway, uh, this is kind of the, how the corner is going to converge, uh, roughly, and the fender will be basically, this is what the tail end of the fender would look like right here. It's going to be a projection here. These are all going to have down flanges here to make them rigid. Of course, it'll come around here into the fender, so um, this will be a little bit of a square uh, cut right here for the, the hinge to roll up into. Um, need a little space there. And then this uh, rolls around into the A-post on the inside here. And your hinge bolt is under here. So hopefully what I'll be able to do is get the sheet metal running in this direction. And then I'll have to scallop around where the bolt goes so the uh, hood can be installed. There will also be a return flange on the back side over here of the hood. But uh, it helps a little bit with visualization to see where everything's, uh, everything's headed towards. Anyway, on to the next thing. Okay, after uh, <clears throat> sending Randy some pictures of this uh, uh, hood, he uh, thought it probably needed to close up a little bit more in the back here, so I went ahead and I just uh, took the, uh, the actual uh, back edge of the hood as it comes off of the, uh, the 1970, and uh, I'm going to have to blend it out a little bit more here uh, to get it to co you know, comply with this dive into the A-post, but we're just going to add this... Uh, it's probably about three inches to the back here and close this uh, this hole up a little bit more. Uh, show a little less of that uh, soap cow. Uh, I think it looks good, um, especially because this has got a little bit of a, a, a lip to it. I didn't really like the way this was dying. In other words, this comes over and then it's supposed to flatten out and then roll up. Um, and cutting it like this, all we end up with is this, it dives straight down into the end of the hood. So there's no way of really getting it to swing back up. And this actually does that, so that helps a lot. So uh, anyway, a little tweak there, and uh, we're not really working on the hood right now. Um, but uh, kind of got to know where you're going with this stuff ahead of time um, so you can uh, get some ideas to commit to some of these uh, uh, placements. Of, uh, the, in other words, bringing this back here, you have to make sure you, you can still mount the, uh, um, the windshield wipers uh, on here, which I did. Just uh, place them on there real quick to make sure there's no interference with the back of the hood. <clears throat> now I'm going to uh, take this off, lift the hood, make sure that this doesn't hit the windshield itself uh, when I'm raising the hood. Otherwise, I'll have to just do maybe a little bit more clearance on the back side, maybe a half of an inch. Okay, with the hood out of the way, the windshield wiper mechanism out of the way, the cowl out of the way, um, now I can finally commit to sealing this up for the final time so I'm going around again and I'm checking and I'm epoxying in uh, different places that need to be epoxied in with some panel adhesive I'm finding any holes in this little uh, containment area here lastly what I'll do is I'll just spray this with um, like a liquid rubber uh, coating that you use for sealing gutters and things like that and that'll coat the whole interior with a, like a rubberized coating but uh, this epoxy takes a long time to dry, so I won't be fooling with that today. I just put it on and let it dry. It'll probably be sometime tomorrow I'll deal with that. At any rate, uh, the next task at hand, as you can see, is fitting 50 pounds of stuff into a 5-pound can. 
can see where the uh, uh, the defrosters used to land. They'd be uh, defrosting the underside of the hood at this point. So the biggest challenge is going to be connecting this outlet uh, across this area right over here, and then that one across that area here to eliminate these rearward pieces here so that we can allow for space uh, to bring the defrosters. These are the defroster outlets. Fortunately, they're located in this spot over here. As you can see where this used to plug in down into there um, so that we can bring the defrosters up right here immediately uh, underneath the glass uh, in the forward section of this dashboard here. Now, um, the one thing that's fortunate on this build is as the dashes evolved, they eliminated that top duct that used to be on the older model challengers on either side that would send the air up to the side glass to defrost the side glass, and they've replaced it with this piece that plugs into a, a vent on the door that comes out of the side of the dashboard. So that's that's a little piece that I was used to have to struggle to get engineered up into this confined space here. Um, and uh, they don't work very effectively when you make them too small. But anyway, they've got this little piece of tubing that's nicely engineered to just go up over the top. So I have to bring uh, my other ducting in and around here. So that's the big challenge, and we'll see how, how that all goes. At any rate, um, this is the fun stuff. Uh, it's good that you can eliminate the uh, airbag over there because this has to go right across where the airbag would normally go. So... At any rate, that's what I'll be up to, um, climbing in and out of this thing, uh, see enough and get everything to clear and everything to made up with the uh, surfaces on the floor or on the backward side of the deck the dashboard. Um, that's I have to maintain the geometry, in other words, of this piece here. So I can't take this apart completely until I have the new piece mended in so that it doesn't move the angle or the length or anything of where this attaches to otherwise it will not meet up with the HVAC plenum and then the outlets for the ducts on the on the uh, face of the dashboard so well, that's what I'm up to now kind of boring I'm gonna try something a little different with this um, um, try to use this piece here that's normally for your uh, defroster ducts to guide the uh, air up to the, below the windshield and what I'm doing is, is normally this would sit in the car like this I just cut off the there was a little curve piece that goes here and the ducting usually runs across the top of this um, and then this curves up and then it's like I've got an S shape and then it goes up to the windshield like that well obviously I'm not gonna be able to do that I need a straight shot straight up from those two outlets so this is already spaced out in the right size as far as the size of these openings. So what I'm gonna to attempt to do is I've cut this off vertical now, but I'm gonna to have to cut it, slowly get it, so that it'll cut, cut it, so I'll cut it to where it's uh, angled backwards like this, so it'll fit both over those uh, outlets in there, and at the same angle, it'll bring it up underneath the base of the windshield. So what I'm doing right now is I'm slowly whittling away at it, and um, what I wanna do is, is instead of having it in here like this, um, I'm obviously not going to use these outlets because of the wrong shape for the windshield, but anyway, I'm going to be feeding it in down in here like this, straight up and down. And then uh, once I get it the right size, hopefully I'll be able to trim it off at the top here, and then uh, I'll have something to work with as far as where my defrosters will go. We'll see if that works. So right now I'm just inching my way down, trying to get this thing to sit in there at the angle where it's going to seal against that foam over there. Obviously, it'll be a removable part. Anyway, that's what I'm up to right now. It may work. I may have to start all over, like with a couple other things I've already done. All right, obviously, it's going to need a little bit of tweaking, a little customization, but this is basically what I ended up with. Back bevel cut these and slide it down right into here. Now, they're a little bit too long, so I'm going to have to cut them back a little bit over here. Uh, this one over here, that one's a little shorter. But I'll have to cut it back before it changes shape over there. And um, 
like I said, by the time I cut this, it's, this one here is a little too long. It actually is open to the bottom over here. So I'll have to run a little wall down in this direction over here to get this a little bit shorter. And you can see how, how much it's going to choke off the uh, this duct over here that runs around here and blows out over here. But really don't have a lot of choice. This is really the priority. Most of the heating and air conditioning is going to come out of here anyway, straight out. Um, this little bit that's going to come onto the driver's side here is negligible anyway. Um, but at any rate, um, that's a sacrifice that has to be made uh, for this to be. This is primary. Uh, you don't want to get caught with your windows fogging up driving down the highway. So anyway, that's where I'm at with that. All right. So um, after I got done uh, cutting down that piece the way I want to see it, um, I installed this tab here that has two weld nuts welded to the back of their 1032 weld nuts so um, this is the piece that um, I ended up with right here what I did was I ended up putting a, an aluminum uh, strip across here that has a break in it so that I could keep both of these uh, openings from collapsing and it also gives a nice uh, land uh, spot for uh, pushing into the foam on the top side of the plenum so I've got this piece in the center here that's basically like a web and um, I'm going to just screw this in to place through here. I've already trimmed this down on the top to where I need it. Anyway, I'm not going to bother to try to get it all the way in there because i got to take it back out. You get the idea. Um, it puts the um, these two openings. I'm going to zoom back out here. Okay, so anyway, puts these two openings right at the base of the windshield right here. So when it's uh, completely installed, screwed tight, it'll be up against there like that, leaving about a half of an inch slot. Uh, for me to put my upper ducts in, finish uh, covers, I should say, on the top side of the dashboard. Anyway, that's where I'm at with that. All right. <clears throat> I've got this piece trimmed up and in here. Um, as you can see, there's very little left compared to uh, the size of the duct that we started with. Um, so... I got two options here. I could just cap the back and live with whatever that volume is, or I could re reestablish, um, remove this connection point between these two pieces here, and cut these two tabs off, and actually come in right here and widen this duct back out a little bit. And that's the option I think I'm going to take, just to give it a little bit more volume since there's basically almost uh, a half of an inch. In between uh, these two ducts, I'll have to reintroduce this. There's a fastening point here. There's a little tab that comes off the top. I'll have to run that around to the uh, to the bottom side over here um, to secure this piece here in order to create enough of an alleyway. Because if I don't remove this here, this duct over here will get pinched right here, and it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to widen it at that point. Um, but anyway. I'm going to take a look at that, see what can be done there, widen that out just a little bit. Okay, when I'm messing with something like this, I like to do what's called monkey branching. That's get a firm grip on the next branch before you let go of the last one. Uh, so before I disconnect this uh, connection point over here, I wanted to make sure that I made a substitution and created a second uh, point where this uh, was secured over here so that this whole piece stays put once I cut this tab away 
and I'll do the same as I go along here. I'll make the top of the uh, the duct and secure it to both halves of the duct so that everything stays in its proper relationship the way it's sitting in here now um, before I pull this uh, piece back out of here to, to finish out the back side of the duct work. Anyway, that's how I'm proceeding. Okay, for this left vent, since all the attachment points were way up here, they had to be cut away for this uh, car, uh, the 70 charger body to fit down over this uh, frame. Um, so I had to trim everything back as far as the attachment points. So what I went ahead and did is I've got another steel bracket here made out of 70 thousandths. Just a small tab screwed to the frame. And then there's another attachment point up here to replace the missing attachment point to make sure that this vent doesn't scoot around on me. All right, so I've gone ahead and um, taken a piece of um, 50 thousandths aluminum here, broke it over an inch, two and a half down. So I've got a sidewall going here, and I've got a top piece now established. And I've got this all just uh, clecoed in, both on the top and on the sides, so that it doesn't rotate on me when I take this whole assembly out. Hopefully this will hold everything together. Uh, when I go ahead and cut this other piece out that's in there right now and um, we'll proceed from there but anyway that's where I'm at right now okay so here's the piece remodeled um, uh, I was able to get a decent sized transfer duct along the back side here compared to what I had this was the piece I cut out and you could see that by not taking advantage of that uh, extra half of an inch uh, there would be virtually no air flow through this uh, piece here. Um, so at any rate, this is what we ended up with. And uh, this time I decided to seal it up with something different. Um, I was going for the HVAC uh, tape that I normally use, which is uh, the aluminum stuff, which works pretty good. It's pretty darn sticky. But this stuff here is even better, it seems to be. It's an aqua seal. It's a rubbery... Uh, type tape that's used for patching pond liners and it's good for up between negative 50 and plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit and um, it was kind of nice. It, I've yet to find anything that really sticks well to the ABS and this stuff really did. So that's a treat right there because this has always been a struggle to get anything to stick to the ABS. So at any rate, that's what it all looks like, and I'm going to pop it in there and see if I have any issues with it. Um, I've already found that I had to do a little clearancing back here for the um, steering wheel support, um, but uh, that was the only issue I found. i got to say, I was uh, dreading this newer style dashboard, but i got to say it's a whole lot uh, better engineered than the um, one that they uh, used up till about 2011. I believe this one came in in 2012 and uh, the fact that they engineered this piece to go through the door and uh, means that I didn't have to get this get involved in crisscrossing that duct over this area and into this pocket over here which is what I've had to do in the past with the other style dashboards that have that little uh, air outlet on the top of the dashboard instead of through the door so that getting that out of the way actually able, enabled me to uh, make a decent size run over here uh, that has a little bit more capacity than I've gotten in the past for this secondary outlet over here besides that. Like I said, you're going to get most of your heating and air conditioning out of this, but um, in the past I've had to really sacrifice on this duct. And this is the tightest one, so over there is pretty wide open. Hopefully I won't have any issues over there. But uh, yeah, that's it in place. Shouldn't have to come away after this all right so here's the other side uh in incomplete uh, i didn't feel like i needed to uh, drag you through all that based on the fact that it was pretty much identical to the other side um i added a bracket right here in order to stabilize this um the uh the volume of this matches the other side uh, initially, I was going to try and take advantage of the, fa the fact that I have more space over here to make a bigger duct. But then I had to cross over this one little area right here. And this one little area pinches it down to the size that it is over there. So it didn't make any sense to try and, um, you know, make it bigger because it's starting out so small. So I just matched the other side. So it should be uh, pretty balanced. 
as far as the air output is concerned. So, the next piece of uh, uh, this job is going to be trying to see how the dash uh, pad fits and what I'm going to have to do as far as retaining it. I have some hopefully better ideas than the ones that I've come up with in the past based on the fact that this dash pad's a little bit easier to work with because it fades in a little bit better. As a matter of fact, this whole thing was a whole lot easier than my last build. I mean, this duck work went pretty quickly, um, and I'm pretty happy about that because it's uh, it's uh, a lot of work usually, um, or it had been a lot of work on my other cars that I've done, um, and I was never really 100% satisfied with the way it came out, but uh, this one here looks... Uh, Looks like it was meant to be. All right, so uh, moving on to the next thing. All right, it's time to get involved with the uh, dash top cover. Um, so I took the uh, pattern that I had made off of uh, the last car and uh, tuned it up a little bit on the front edge, made sure it met this uh, windshield bed a little closer. And um, at any rate, um, uh, it's time to uh, see what's going on here with the uh, the actual uh, dash and how it fits through the hole here. All right, couple things right off the bat. This dash pad is much lighter than uh, the one I put in that was a 2011, the old style dash. Also, because the ends are capped with a separate piece, the dash is already almost narrow enough to fit between the A posts, which um, you know. Uh, the other pieces are a bit of a struggle putting them in and cutting them because you don't want to overcut them. Uh, so uh, this newer style dash is definitely uh, definitely a, a better uh, piece to be working with. Um, so I've got the pattern laid up over here now. Now that this uh, the dashboard is actually it's actually screwed into place uh, with a couple of screws to hold it right where it's supposed to be. You know, lining up all those exhaust vents and everything, and I'll do my first rough cut. Got to sneak up on it still, but uh, anyway, that's where I'm at. I got to say, I'm not uh, <clears throat> upset about how easily that trimmed up. Um, almost hate to have to add a rim to the front, which I'm going to have to do because I have to attach the VIN number. And here, also, I have to. This is going to be a. Uh, I have to make up this little uh, corner here, so I'm definitely going to have to put a uh, rim. Uh, to catch the front edge of this, if this had come out and played out to here, I might be able to just uh, tuck it up underneath the windshield because the, the frets coming up to about here, but you never know what that's going to look in the end. Look like in the end, it's better to have a uh, have a rim that you can tuck up underneath uh, to. Um, at any rate, the um, there's little vertical pieces that are, um, I don't know if I could show you on this piece here, Little vertical pieces like that, little reinforcement pieces that I have to cut out of the bottom here. So I got to take this back out so that this thing will push down a little bit further. But it's not fighting me at all. Uh, again, those uh, the older older dashes. Uh, I mean, I really had to torque the torque that one down in order to get it down to below the windshield. These are much flatter. Um, I'm going to have to clearance out here uh, for the. Uh, for the defrosters and also uh, put in the um, the little sensor that uh, turns the headlights on in the center there so but uh, man if you were doing just a quick and dirty uh, car where you didn't care about all the creature comforts uh, pretty be, pretty much be done right there all right so with the dashboard out of the way um, I'm going ahead and I'm starting to prepare this area to uh, for that forward rim that I have to build that will retain the front edge of the uh, the dashboard and finish out these corners. It will also have the finished ducts hopefully for the uh, defrosters over here and a place to mount the sensor for the headlights. Uh, the first thing I went ahead and did is I made these tabs They're out of eighth inch uh, steel and they're threaded with quarter twenty threads. and. Um, I have these, uh, I'll be using these dome head, allen head, um, quarter 20s uh, for fastening this rim to the front edge here through some holes in the rim. We'll see how that all works out, see if it looks good or not. Anyway, um, 
they're at an angle uh, and the holes will be at an angle through the top so that if it ever needs to be disassembled with the windshield in you'll be able to just reach in there with an allen head uh, screwdriver and uh, unattach this front rim take that out anyway that's what I'm up to all right so I've got these uh, 5 8 pieces of tubing here with a well uh, welded washer on the base and um, the uh, quarter 20 allen head is in the in the bottom here screwing this piece to this flange that I just made up and I've got five of them like that and they're all just running way longer than they need to um, and the idea here is going to be uh, I'll come in with the dash pad like this and then I'm going to trim these down to the bare minimum of what they need to be to hold the dash pad down and then I'll introduce my uh, a metal flange right here all the way along and uh, it'll hopefully include these uh, pieces here for the uh, the vents the out the outflow vents for the defrosters and uh, anyway um, on the bottom side over here I've got um, I'm starting to sand off these there's a bunch of ribs you can see these reinforcement ribs over here on this leading edge so that all I end up with is just this uh, the two layers the vinyl the foam and then the plastic which is about a half of an inch so I got to get rid of all of these these ribs over here because they're keeping it from settling down in that in that pocket anyway that's where I'm at right now all right with the dash in there I cut some little relief cuts in here you can see these things are running a little bit wild here way bigger than they need to be um, so in order to make sure they're all you can see they're sticking out of different angles based on the shape so in order for me to figure out how they're gonna fit exactly what I've done is I've got this little pattern that I'm gonna slide down over each one of them here and um, once it's down over that and fit tight against the dash and the top of the uh, windshield bed over here I'll trace around here and that'll tell me how much I, I need to cut off with each one of these get the dash back out of here trim those back and uh, move on from there all right so this is what they look like cut cut off flush to where you know the metal will hold down this uh, vinyl this one here has got a little bit of it goes uphill and then downhill in this direction and then that one does some of the same all the way down anyway that's where I'm at with this all right so I'm developing this leading edge now this uh, hold down uh, piece and I thought I'd stop here to show you um, I'm going just a section at a time in between each of these um, hold downs here and what I've developed so far is these two end sections and you can see my pieces of tubing with the washers um, on the underneath side over here welded and then also you can see that now these um, these bolts are actually captured in there so it's a bit fiddly um, but it works uh, you know, as this fits down in here what I've done is I've narrowed the openings down to just some small slots just enough to feed the Allen wrench in over here um, now in practice in, in practice you'd actually need an Allen head with a swivel uh, on a ratchet because this handle obviously would hit the glass if you're trying to take this forward bolt here and this forward bolt out over here but at any rate um, basically they they uh, will screw into these tabs here and here of course I've got to be careful not to cross thread these because now I've got these are captured I don't want to ruin the threads on this so I'm being very careful to pull these when I'm pulling this in and out so each time that I add a section I have to uh, remove the whole thing so I can weld it up because I can't obviously weld it I could tack it on the car, but not weld it because obviously you don't want to ruin the dashboard top. So that's how I'm going about this. I'm also, because the dash has a, it's got a swale in it over here. I'm actually uh, um, trying to copy the swale so that this fits down tightly on the vinyl. And I've also uh, put this quarter inch turn down lip around here so that also when you tighten it down, 
it kind of bites into the vinyl a little bit, gives you a, a cleaner look as far as instead of just a piece of flat sheet metal on here. Of course, all of this is going to be body um, worked, and then it's going to be painted with a textured paint, so hopefully this will just disappear uh, in the end result. The toughest bit's going to be my little outlets, which are going to be for the defrosters in between these two points over here. So I'm going to do the ends first, and then I'll work my way into the center. All right, I just, um, I've got this one tightened in now. I just thought I'd show you this one here as it's tightening down. You could see that it, uh, maybe you can't see it from this, but you could see it starts to grip down on the front edge here. It keeps it from springing up. Anyway, that's how I'm retaining the front edge. All right, a little consideration here um, while I'm working on the dashboard is there's some wires that come up through the dashboard on the corner over here and they go up uh, the A post and into the ceiling or into the uh, headliner I should say. So I want to make sure that this plug is always available above the dash line here. So I've um, put a plate in here with a drill hole and then pop this in there so that that's secure there so that if I ever have to unplug it here I can always just pull this and pop this out and that frees up the upper harness. Um, anyway just thought I'd show you that. I got to do the other side like that too. Okay, so I uh, had to pull everything out again because I needed to trim around. I had to install a bracket here to hold the um, sensor for the headlights. Um, I'm going to have to pull it back out again because right now the, this plastic on the bottom side is bottoming out on the screws that I used to install the sensor. Um, one of the things I did on this one, it didn't do on the last car is I installed the sensor on its own bracket that stays with the car when you take the dash out. That way you don't have that that cord. Um, it's one of the things that's frustrating about these dashes. Pulling them out, that last uh, thing is still plugged in. You've got everything out. You've got the dash in your lap, and you're trying to get in there to unplug that one last thing. This way it stays plugged in, and the, uh, the dash can come away. Anyway, I've got uh, this side uh, pretty much finished. I've got it mostly trimmed away, clear of the um, these uh, defroster ducts. I uh, have to trim it back just a little bit more. And then, of course, I'll have to make the defroster ducts. Um, but that's for next week. I appreciate everybody that uh, is watching, and I will see you on the next one.